Okay, let us study two body kinematics in the elementary level. And we consider a two body system, two body relativistic system, whose full momentum, uh, two particles A and B, uh, whose full momentum are given by P1 and P2. And their rest mass is uh, M0 and M2. Uh, from now on, if I write mass, it is a rest mass. I, it is too busy if I put a zero. So if I write just M, then it is a rest mass. So let us consider the case that two body system whose full momentum are P1 and P2. If I rewrite this uh, full momentum in terms of energy and momentum, it is expressed like that. Energy comma momentum. Uh, by the way, for momentum P mu was energy divided by speed of light and momentum. However, in particle physics, uh, C is constant and it is usually put to be zero in theory. So if you want to recover speed of light, it is easy to recover it because actual physical dimensions of energy and momenta are differ by uh, the, the differ by speed of light so you just put divide by c so from now on we just ignore speed of light and we put just c equals one These are the components of the particle 1's momentum and these are the components of particle 2's momentum. And let us define the total full momentum capital P which is the sum of the two momenta. So if I express the component's energy is E and capital P 3 vector is the 3 vector of the total uh, full momenta. So E is the sum of E1 plus E2 and P, capital P must be sum of P1 plus P2. We recall that the two particle has rest masses M1 and M2. So if I square the full momentum P1, then I would get M1 squared. And that is energy squared subtracted by the momentum squared and particle 2 is also. So if I move this uh, momentum, uh, three momentum square to the right hand side and I find the energy of the particle 1 is the square root to P1 squared plus M1 squared and particle 2's energy is the square root P2 squared plus M2 squared. If I solve this equation I would get plus minus the two solutions but there is no particle with whose energy is negative, so we just choose the positive sign only. What about the four momentum of uh, uh, total four momentum? Capital P is a P1 plus P2, and energy of the total four momentum is the sum of the energies of the two momentum. So this is E1 plus an E2 and capital P is the sum of P1 plus P2 in three momentum. All right, this is a general expression for the two-body system. And let us consider the center momentum frame. Center momentum frame is the frame where the sum of the two momenta becomes exactly zero. Then capital P is zero, that means P1 plus P2 is zero. This means P1 and P2 are dependent on each other and we can express them in terms of a single vector, single three vector, that is a P3 vector star. Star means that we, have, uh, we are writing the expressions in the center momentum frame. All right, so P1 can be expressed as a P star and P2 is minus P star. In that case, this expression becomes quite simple. This is zero, and this is P1, uh, P1 squared, that is a P star squared. P2 squared, that is a minus P star squared, that is the same as the P star squared. 
So, energy of the particle can be expressed as this E can be expressed as square root capital M square plus capital P square if there is a mass in this case in the rest frame P star uh, capital P becomes zero so it is energy becomes mass of the whole system we call this is uh, we call this as invariant mass invariant mass that is the sum of sum of two energies of the particle at the center of momentum frame so again we use the star for the particle one and particle two now the momenta are the same and uh, that value is a p star so we have the constraint that total mass uh, actually the invariant mass of the two-body system is the sum of the two energies of the particle in the uh, center of momentum frame so m1 m2 if capital m is given then this is the equation that can be solved for p star absolute value all right so let us move this as one single square root to the right hand side and square the equation then i would get this guy squared and this guy squared and p squared p squared cancels what i what i get is mass squared for m1 mass squared for the m2 and the crossing term minus 2m square root m2 squared plus a p star squared and the first term is the capital m squared that is invariant mass of the two-body system so this guy disappears this guy disappears and what is it this is energy of the particle 2 so energy of the particle 2 can be solved as move this m2 squared to the left hand side no no keep this m2 squared here and uh, move this m1 squared to the right hand side and move this squared to, to the left hand side and divide both sides by 2 capital m then the final result for the second particle energy at the center of momentum frame is capital M squared plus remember this guy is a 2 and this guy is 2 2 plus squared subtracted by M1 squared divided by 2 times invariant mass of the two-body system energy of the first particle can be obtained by using the same way the, because of the symmetry of this, this equation I can just flip the 1 and 2 if I exchange 1 and 2 then the, express, the expression is exactly the same form except that 1 is replaced by 2 is replaced by 1 and 1 is replaced by 2 so this is the expression this is the formula for the energies of the two particles in the center of momentum frame whose invariant mass is capital M all right next this equation can be solved for p star the absolute value of the p star so let us rewrite this expression this is this is that here m capital m squared plus m2 squared minus m1 squared and i have two capital m and energy of the second particle that is square root m2 squared plus the p star squared in order to simplify the expression let me introduce a new variable x x is the absolute value of the p star divided by the invariant mass of the system and m is the ratio of the particle m1 mass and m2 over capital m and for simplicity i for symmetry i just put the c equals one all right I factor this capital M out from the left hand side then uh, this will be 1 and I put 1 equals to C so this is C squared 
And second term is m2 squared over capital M squared. Using this definition, I would get this is uh, b squared. And this is minus m1 squared, so I factored out capital M squared, so this is m1 squared over capital M squared. That is a squared. So left hand side became m capital M squared c squared plus b squared minus a squared. What about the right hand side? Right hand side is two times. I factor out capital M from the square root and the square root inside of square root. I have to divide this uh, by capital M squared. That means this guy is b squared and this guy is x squared. All right. Let us divide both sides by capital M squared. Then I would get, all right, this is b squared, but I can put one, one is a c, so it is b squared, c squared, plus x squared. So let us square both sides. So this is, uh, if I square the left hand side, a, a to the fourth power, b to the fourth power, c to the fourth power, and minus 2ab minus minus 2ab a squared b squared and ac minus 2a squared c squared and bc plus plus 2 b squared c squared right hand side is a <coughs> I have factor of 2 if after it being squared it is a 4 b squared c squared plus a 4 x squared Okay, let us move this 4b squared c squared to the left hand side. Here I have plus b squared c squared, so if I subtract 4b squared c squared and shift this uh, 4x squared to the left hand side, I would get 4x squared equals a to the fourth, b to the fourth, c to the fourth, minus 2a squared b squared, minus b, uh, 2b squared c squared, minus 2c squared a squared. Let us define this uh, symmetric function, cyclic function of a, b, and c to be lambda a squared b squared c squared, right? Then lambda a, b, c means lambda a, b, c means a squared b squared c squared minus 2 a, b, b, c, and c, a, right? Then x is one half lambda square root of lambda a squared b squared c squared. Let us return to the original variable. X is a p star over capital M, and b is m1 star uh, m1 divided by capital M. C is m2 divided by capital M. So if I substitute those values in the, the uh, final result, I would get p star. That is the magnitude of the three momentum of each particle in the two-body system in the, at the center momentum frame is 1 over 2m square root lambda function m1 squared over m squared m2 squared over m squared comma 1. Okay. By the way, this expression looks uh, quite complicated, but eventually it is a factorized. The, let us see the factorized form of this lambda a squared b squared c squared. All right. So I have a to the fourth, b to the fourth, c to the fourth, minus two a squared b squared, minus two b squared c squared, minus two c squared a squared. So let us express, uh, simplify this expression in terms of a. And uh, because a, a, b, c are all symmetric, so it's uh, uh, anyone, uh, any, any, uh, anyone among a and b, a, b, c can be uh, chosen as a simplified form. I have a to the fourth and b to the uh, b squared b squared uh, a squared a to the fourth a squared a squared. So I have factored the minus two b squared minus two c squared a squared. And then remaining thing is uh, without a squared without a squared a b to the fourth c to the fourth and minus two b squared c squared. The last piece is can be factorized as a b squared minus c squared the square. It is again factorized as a b, b squared minus c squared is actually the b plus c and b minus c. So it is again factorized. All right, if I expand this, if I expand this and add, I would get two times b squared plus two times c squared. 
However, I have a minus sign, so the, my factorized form is put negative sign it to each of them. I mean, minus b minus c squared and c minus b squared. No, no, no. Minus b plus c squared times minus b minus c squared. This part can be written as. So after being factorized, I have a squared minus b plus c squared, a squared minus b minus c squared. So let us uh, factorize these two pieces once again. Then this is a plus b plus c, a minus b minus, uh, a minus b minus c, a minus b plus c, a plus b minus c. Symmetric form can be found if I factor this negative sign from this factor, I would get negative sign and a plus b plus c and a plus b, a plus b minus c, b plus c minus a and c plus a minus b. It is uh, called the triangle equation because a uh, triangle function because of the fact if, if I make a triangle with the side, uh, size of length a, b and c, this guy must be some of the three, three sides must be positive and sum of two, any sum of two must be greater than the other side. So this is greater than zero, this is greater than zero, this is greater than zero. So if, if A, B, C satisfy the equation, uh, satisfy the equation that is negative, then this, if I miss this factor and this, this one, this over a factor, uh, this uh, four factors, product of four factors must be positive always. That's it.